Hello. Someone kindly asked me if I would talk a bit more detail about occupational asthma. I mentioned this in my last podcast, and um, I'll talk a bit more about it today. So why is occupational asthma important? Well, if you've got asthma which is caused at work, you might be eligible for compensation from your employer. But more importantly, if the diagnosis is made in time and changes are made in your workplace or you change your job or the nature of your job, you may be able to get back to a normal way of life. And essentially, this is the one type of asthma that could be cured if um, it is recognized early enough. So how do you develop occupational asthma? What happens is that you get exposed to something that could spark off a reaction in your body. Essentially, this wakes up your immune system to try and protect you from exposure to a foreign substance. So, for example, if you um, are exposed to things like glues or flour, which might be in a bakery, or shellfish, or paints, and many other substances, these, uh, this exposure can spark off a reaction in your body. And what happens over time, due to exposure to one of these things, your body makes antibodies which are there to fight against these substances, which your body recognizes as something that's potentially trying to harm you. So these antibodies float around in your body, and they attach themselves to various cells inside your body. So at this stage, your body is really primed to fight against that substance that you're exposed to at work. Now, sometimes later, when you're exposed again to the substance, say, baking flour at the bakery, which you've started working at, the bits of flour get into your body through your lungs, and this then meets up with those antibodies that you developed in the past. So what's happening is that this substance is meeting up with your own body's guard system against this substance. And your body's defense system kicks in, and in order to fight off the substance that has entered your body, lots of reactions take place, where substances like histamine are released, which cause various reactions to take place in your body. So as a result of this, um, this mini-army, in essence, which is trying to defend your body against the substance that it thinks is trying to attack you, the histamine and other substances um, come together to cause what's called an inflammatory reaction. So what happens as a result of release of histamine and other substances, you end up having an asthma attack with tightening of your air passages, swelling of the walls due to fluid collecting inside, and also collection of these defense cells inside your air passages. And that's what forms the phlegm and mucus that collects inside your air passages when your asthma is flaring up. So when this happens, you'll find that you start coughing or wheezing, which is whistling noises coming from your chest, or you might have difficulty in breathing or chest tightness. These are the typical symptoms which occur due to asthma. What also might happen is you might be experiencing a runny nose or an itchy nose when you're at work or soon after you leave work. Now, as I mentioned before in the last podcast, the clue that you may have developed occupational asthma is if you find that your symptoms, this coughing, wheezing, or difficulty in breathing, get worse when you're at work or soon after leaving work, and if you find better, and if you find that you feel a lot better when you leave work or when you're away from work, you may indeed have occupational asthma. So if your asthma fits this sort of pattern, where you notice that symptoms seem to be associated with your work, you would benefit from an assessment with your doctor, which would probably result in a referral to an occupational health specialist. Because 
Firstly, occupational asthma can potentially be cured if changes are made in your workplace and if you ch- or if you change your job. And secondly, because you may be eligible for compensation from your employers, it's really important to consult your doctor as early as possible, as I say, because you would probably be referred to see a specialist in occupational medicine if your doctor thinks this may be related to your work. So what are the substances and occupations that are linked to occupational asthma? There are lots of these, and I will put a link in the information page on my website to some of these occupations and to pages which you might find useful. And that website is bigcutdoc.com. I'll put a link to it in the text. So examples of occupations that are linked to development or worsening of asthma include the shellfish industry, the farming industry, baking and bakery industries, and, for example, working in factories um, that um, produce glues or that work with glues or paints could also spark off occupational asthma. As I said, there are lots of different industries that could be associated with occupational asthma. And so even if I haven't mentioned these, or they're not listed in the resource that I've put on my website, um, if you notice that your asthma symptoms are flaring up at work and getting better when you're away from work, mention this to your doctor. Now, there are two more things about occupational asthma that I want to talk about. The two things relate firstly to diagnosis and second to occupational rhinitis, that is occupational disease that affects your nose. So first, um, talking about diagnosis. How is occupational asthma diagnosed? The main way that your doctor or a specialist will get a clue that your asthma is caused by your work is based on your medical history. And that's the story that you tell in relation to your symptoms and how they are related to your work. And if your symptoms seem to be worse at work and improve when you're away from work, that is the most important clue that you might have occupational asthma. Secondly, the doctor will try and prove that your air passages get tight when you're exposed to substances at work. And this is done in two ways. Mainly, Um, They use lung function tests using a peak flow diary every two hours or so when you're at work and when you're away from work. And in this way, a pattern of how readings at work um, and readings away from work can be shown to vary with your exposure at work. So high readings in peak flow are normal, as you know, and low readings mean that your air passages are getting tight. So if your uh, readings are high when you're away from work and they come down and are low when you're at work, that's a clue that you're being exposed to something that's sparking off your asthma. The other test that they do is to expose you to the suspected substance to see whether your symptoms actually get worse or not. Now this is called a challenge test because that's what the specialist is doing and this is done by specialist in an environment where they have facilities to do resuscitation if you're made worse by exposure to that substance because it could spark off a very bad asthma attack. So this is called a challenge test and would, as I say, only be done in in a safe environment where they have personnel and equipment to treat you if you do have a severe attack. So if the specialists decide that you have got occupational asthma, they will then get involved with your employers to try and find a solution. And this is not always going to be very easy because employers are not always keen to pay compensation if the environment at their uh, workplace is, is something that sparked off your asthma or caused asthma. And so this is one of the reasons why you do need referral to a specialist 
if occupational asthma is considered to be a problem in your case. And what would happen is the specialist would try and negotiate with your employers to try and find a way of you continuing your work in a safe environment, or it might be that you might have to move and change your job. Now, the other thing I wanted to add is that sometimes, after being exposed to one of these substances that can cause occupational asthma at work, you may first get symptoms in your nose, and that's a runny nose, itching nose, sneezing a lot, or difficulty in breathing through your nose. Very much like the symptoms that you get with hay fever. And the general term for this, where you get allergic symptoms in your nose due to exposure to something at work, is called allergic um, rhinitis or occupational rhinitis. Now the reason for telling you this is that occupational allergic rhinitis may happen quite a long time before this goes on to develop occupational asthma, which would cause coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, or maybe even a severe asthma attack. So this can start up to a year before asthma starts. And if this is diagnosed early enough, what can happen uh, with changes at work or with change in your occupation is that occupational asthma might be prevented Uh, in effect, um, would be cured because you would no longer be exposed to the substance. So in summary, I've spoken about one of the types of asthma that you might develop, and it may not yet be diagnosed or confirmed by your doctor. And this is occupational asthma or occupational rhinitis. We're not sure how many people Um, have occupational asthma, but we believe that about 10% of adults with asthma have asthma which is related to their occupation. So it's important that this type of asthma is diagnosed because first it may be curable if um, adequate changes are made at work or if you change your job. And second, if it's confirmed, you might be eligible for compensation from your employer. The clues that you might have occupational asthma or occupational rhinitis are first that you notice that you get symptoms that are worse at work or shortly after you leave work and that those symptoms improve when you're away from work. It might only be obvious when you take a longer break from work, say a couple of weeks, but it's important to notice this difference. So I hope that this talk has been helpful for you, and if so, please share this podcast with your friends and colleagues.